private Facebook page. On, oops, let's see. I'll start that over. So thank you for coming. Uh, we just as a reminder, we were having a little bit of issues casting to Facebook Live on the American Sokol page. But as a way of fixing that, we've decided to just go ahead and cast that to my private Facebook page for now, Ana Kukova. So if you are uh, hoping to watch on Facebook Live, just go there. Um, you're welcome to put in the chat log your name, your location, and maybe how you heard about the event. We would love to um, keep track of, of that. Uh, all right, so my name is Anna Kukova. I am the education director for our National American Sokol. Uh, the Sokol organization started back in 1862 in, in Prague, but in uh, 1865 was the first time that it came here to the U.S. And it started, uh, the first Sokol in the U.S. Would, was then in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. And uh, we have district levels and we've got um, uh, national levels, and there's even World Sokol. So uh, we just are really proud of this um, organization and how much we are trying to uh, keep up with all things Czech. And um, as a big treat for us today, we have invited a guest speaker from the Czech Republic. He is the deputy director of Museum Ostrofolidovich Kroju, which basically translates to the Island of Czech Fost Costume Museum. Um, technically, the, the name of the city is Ostrov, which means island. So I'm not sure whether it's a play on words or whether that's the uh, um, just technically ah. also the museum uh, location. Okay. But I will. Uh, Give the give the uh, floor now to our deputy director Josef Vacek, who has our lovely map behind him of um, oh. of Kroya okay. all around the Czech Republic. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Thank you, Anna. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm pretty glad for uh, that opportunity to this has been gave me. Uh, and my name is Josef or Joe or Joey Pepper, as you wish. <laughs> Uh, so if you if you go have any questions, uh, just type it, uh, and uh, there are some question to be full screen. Uh, it's up to you, I guess. Yes, please, Don. Um, if you could give uh, Josef Vacek full screen for our our lecture, that would be great. Because I, I cannot, maybe, I, cannot do, I cannot do it on my own. Yes, and maybe we can also give him the presenter. Um, credentials so that he can share his screen if he needs to. He's, he's yeah. co-host. <laughs> um, and so he I, should be. I will, I will, I will continue. Um, actually, uh, I will um, well, tell a few few words about me, about myself. All right, before you start, um, Don, do you need to do anything else so that we can make him full screen? Um, Is he not full screen? Not for me. I don't see him full screen. Um, I will I will share share the screen uh, since it is pretty necessary. Yeah, that would I, be great. I Perfect. hope it will work better. Um, and we, it works now, so I see you full screen. This is great. Thank you. Yes, I hope it will go. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> Where it is? Where it is? It's not going full screen. I don't know why. Uh, yeah, that is full screen. Okay, I, yeah. So uh, again, um, my name is Joseph. Uh, I work for the museum for two years, uh, but I'm not an ethnographer, not an uh, ethnologist. Uh, actually, I'm an economist. And uh, before starting to work in museum, um, I worked for eight years uh, for Adidas uh, as a store manager. Um, uh, and um, I learned a fine uh, thing uh, when I started uh, each meeting with my team. Uh, we've played a short video, so uh, I will do it as well. Uh, I hope I can access to chat. Uh, 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 it is here. So I'm just posting a short video presentation of our museum. Uh, so if uh, you play it's just two minutes, 
uh, and it will show you briefly what do we have here and it's nice video so uh, I will give you two minutes of time for, for playing the video and then we will carry on. And right now, Jose Panevatsko, uh, you are sharing your screen. So can you play the video for us? Uh, it is possible, of course. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. It is, is it all right? I don't see it yet. Um, While we're figuring this out, I just want to show everyone that um, so, one so, of the, so well, I will I will stop sharing the screen and okay. the, the the link is in the chat. Okay. So, so Don, I'll let you share your screen then, if you can click on that video and share that. Uh, uh, while that's being I've worked on, yeah, I just I've just posted I've just posted the link to YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, so everyone can play the video presentation of our museum. Would you like them to do that on their own or right now? Would you like us to share that? Uh, I guess it would be better everyone will play it on their own because I'm okay. not sure if if uh, the video will play. If I will sh share my screen mm -hmm. and then play, I, I, I've i tried it. It, uh -huh. it looks like it's working now. Yes, it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So uh, two minutes and so okay. Joseph, we we have no sound. Did you click on add the sound? Uh, when you share it, you have to click on sound on the bottom. <laughs> when you share your screen, it may, you might have to stop sharing and then share stop, again. Stop sharing it and then reshare it. Yeah. Um. So I'm not sure if that's all right. I can. I'll do it. Yes. If you'd like. Yeah. Yeah. It would be better. I I hope that it will work fine. All right. Here we go. Just one moment. <clears throat> Share my screen and uh, yes, there we go. Oh, and I might have, <laughs> I probably forgot to click the audio button as well. Give me one moment here. Stop share and I'll try again. Share sound. All right. Okay. Yeah, but it, yeah, that's that's I yeah I suppose it would it would not yeah, it's not fluent as it should be. Uh, Okay, so thanks a lot.
Uh, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so so uh, I will share a screen uh, with the presentation I do have. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> And just okay. so everyone's aware, this museum only opened about a year ago. So yeah. I'm just so impressed with how much you've accomplished in, in this yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, what are you going to expect today? Uh, I guess one hour won't be enough, one hour and a half uh, or one hour and 20 That's minutes. okay, we are all um, ears. Okay, perfect. Uh, so the presentation is divided into two parts. Uh, I will tell you just a few, few words about the history of uh, Ostrov, of the island, of the place where the museum is located, because uh, the history of this place is pretty rich and long, uh, more than 800 years. Uh, and a short story of our museum, because it's pretty interesting since uh, no one has ever done before the way or the, the thing we, we do. Uh, and uh, I will tell you some, uh, as promised, a uh, few stories about uh, the most interesting pieces in our exposure and about exposure itself. And then the second part of the presentation or lecture would be more lecture um, about a brief, brief history or brief story about the Croya uh, in the Czech lands. So, uh, origin development and the mise. Um, so here where the museum is located, um, this map of the Czech Republic uh, and uh, the place of our museum is it's about 80 kilometers far from, from Prague. Uh, it's about an hour uh, by car. Uh, we are located in a uh, yeah, in the middle of nowhere, let's say, uh, Anatole city. It's uh, about 20 or 30 uh, people live here in Ostrov. So and is it accessible by bus or train? Uh, well, where it's pretty hard to get here by bus uh, and it's impossible to get it here by train. <laughs> so <laughs> so, so just, just by car. So uh, rent a car. Yeah, just by car. Uh, we cannot do anything with it, but uh, the atmosphere here uh, is pretty good, uh, especially because we are dealing with the Croya, which is uh, connected with village. So it's better than it, when it will be in the middle of the large city. Uh, so uh, the place itself, Ostrov, which translate itself as island it's funny um, but as added, it's the, the true true name of the place uh, and the first sign of uh, this let's say place uh, is more than 800 years ago it was a small fortress here uh, and a residence of minor nobility um, and uh, in last 800 years uh, more than 40 owners uh, owned it here. Uh, and uh, the interesting things uh, started to happen here uh, in the end or in the middle of 18th century, where it became a true farmyard. Uh, you can see a map. It, uh, the interesting thing about this map is that this map is at this, as old as the United States. Uh, <laughs> this map uh, is from, from the half of 18th century. Uh, so, so you can see the red circle and uh, four small uh, buildings, uh, which represents today's, uh, today's building. So uh, in the end of 18th century, uh, most of the buildings were built and also the building where the museum now is located. Uh, so, uh, our, our museum or the house uh, where the museum now is located uh, served for mostly for uh, cattle and uh, livestock and our, uh, our animals uh, and uh, uh, the, yeah, the history uh, was pretty bright until the 1948, I guess most of you are aware what happened uh, in 
this year uh, in the Czechoslovakia Communist Party come, came to power uh, and uh, started to rule uh, and uh, unfortunately uh, they yeah that they tried to started to use uh, this farmyard uh, and it was stately owned uh, and unfortunately they've made no investments at all mm -hmm. Uh, so that uh, in 40 years, uh, this farmyard uh, became a ruin. Uh, and in, uh, after the Velvet Revolution, I guess uh, all, most of you are aware of it, um, the, in 19th or early 19th, uh, the farmyard uh, came back to, to private hands, uh, but the, the new owners uh, saw what uh, happened with it, uh, so they made no investments. Uh, you can see how Communist Party uh, look after the properties which are uh, which are they are which are they running which are uh, yeah, they are using. So it was a total ruin. Uh, and before before two thousand and four, uh, it looked like this. Those are. Uh, mm. It's it's a, it's our present museum, but if before or twenty years ago, it looked like this. Huge difference. Complete complete the mess. Mm -hmm. uh, so in two thousand four, the rescue for this farmyard uh, it's a it is a miracle miracle uh, what happened mm -hmm. here in four years, uh, because the owner of a large forestry company bought it, and in four years uh, made a. Um, expensive uh, reconstruction and made made the headquarters of his company here. So so the uh, employees of his company started to work here in Ostrov. Uh, unfortunately, after a few years of operation, uh, this company gone bankrupt, partially bankrupt. So uh, in this building uh, where the museum is where the, our museum is located now. Uh, there were no usage for, for offices, so uh, the owner uh, thought about what to do with uh, this nice uh, newly reconstructed building. Uh, so that's the, that's the uh, farmyard after the reconstruction. Uh, mm. You can see uh, this building represents current or present museum. Uh, so so uh, in 2016, uh, the story of our museum begins uh, because uh, uh, the owner met a, a lady who wanted to uh, present somewhere her collection of fall costumes. Uh, and since uh, there was a free space, let's say, uh, and the owner is a fan of, uh, let's say, villagers' life and uh, loves, loves the topic. Uh, it can, it became, uh, yeah, the story story begins so because he bought it, uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, it put a first step in the way of building our museum. Um, in a short time, we bought a, a or. He bought uh, two even larger collections, and um, we've met or uh, we faced first uh, experts or first ethnographers, ethnologists uh, from Charles University in Prague, uh, who helped us with uh, the first steps. Uh, but most critical point and uh, the greatest luck uh, which museum uh, had was uh, appointing uh, Mr. Kucha, uh, his current curator. Yeah, get perfect. You have. A, I book. have. I have the book. That's, I should probably open nice. it and show everyone a little, a few, just a few pages, if yeah, I can. Do I, I do have. I do have. Do I do have uh, pay, pictures of it. Uh, <laughs> it's just beautiful, um, lovely, just very large photos. Yeah, uh, and Mr. Kucha, Mr. Kucha is uh, one of the most skilled person of uh, uh, yeah, in the cryotopic uh, and the author of Atlas. 
uh, and uh, without him we will not be able to to put everything together because he knows uh Croya from all region all around the Czech Republic uh, and it would be it would not be possible to to build the exposure in in the, the high level uh, we do have here uh, yeah that's that's yeah, plus uh, you can you can buy it uh, in National Czech and Slovak Museum and Library uh, in their air shop. Uh, so if you are interested in, feel free to buy it. We will be glad. Um, so after five years of uh, preparation, uh, we've put together 260 complete fall costumes from 41 regions uh, from all around the Czech Republic for uh, and the. Uh, well, category which is pretty important and uh, also interesting, uh, and I I love I love I love those uh, fall costumes uh, are from former German speaking regions. Um, uh, again, I guess you are aware that uh, one third of uh, today's Czech Republic borders spoke German. It's the brown brown field. Uh, so everything which is brown uh, was a German speaking or were German speaking regions uh, in the end of 19th century. Um, and those people, unfortunately, were uh, had to move out of the Czech Republic or Czechoslovakia to Germany. Uh, so, so they mm, uh, took with uh, them what they, can uh, one, what they could uh, took uh, and what was important for them uh, so that uh, they've taken away all their fall, fall costumes uh, and which which was not uh, taken by them. Uh, it was uh, destroyed by the Czech citizens uh, because they were angry on them. I, I don't want to 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 uh, get uh, deep post World in, War II, uh, if that helps anyone uh, after the Holocaust uh, and all that. Yeah, it was a very yeah. difficult time period. Yes, so, go ahead. So, so, uh, so mo most most costumes from those regions were out, um, but we yeah, uh, those are pictures of uh, of uh, folk costumes from German speaking regions. We've uh, connected to a museum in Germany where they those fall costumes uh, have in uh, the depositories. Uh, and when they saw that uh, we do have a, a nice, let's say exposure and we, we are doing our job well, uh, so they've lent us those fall costumes and we are pretty glad because uh, it's impossible to get them not nowhere else than in the depositories of a German Museum, Sudeten German Museum in Munich. Mm -hmm. Munich. Yeah, and then we were finished and uh, the D-Day uh, is the September the 4th, uh, last year when we opened our museum. Uh, so, it was a nice uh, celebration of fall costumes. Uh, we've invited some uh, dancers and uh, it was a great, great day for us. Um, and so that we are the only institution in the Czech Republic who, who have represents or uh, have been exposure or Croya from all fall costume regions. And we've made a map uh, for the first time where all full costume region are displayed graphically. Uh, we are pretty proud of it. Uh, Very because, beautiful uh, map. Uh, it is. It is. It's the picture probably the size. Yeah, it's two, the main, two times the height of a person. It's a very big map. Yeah, it's yeah four four meters to two meters. Uh, it's main hall of our museum, and we are uh, pretty pretty proud, proud of it. Um, it is so masterpiece uh, of uh, Mr. Kucha and our director and uh, the owner of the museum, uh, Mr. Jan Michanek. Uh, 
so so those two people uh, did a really really great job with it. So uh, what do we have uh, in the exposure? Uh, mostly folk costumes from uh, the end of 19 and beginning of 20th century. Uh, mostly festive uh, wedding and um, few casual uh, fall costumes. Uh, the oldest we do have are from the first uh, half of the 19th century, mostly from Bohemian part because uh, fall costumes were put aside uh, much earlier than in Moravian so that uh, the fall costumes are, uh, are older. Uh, for example, Pilsner, from Pilsen region. Uh, and also we do have uh, much new newer costumes. Uh, example, great example is a uh, folk costume from Hana region. 90% um, almost, 90% uh, of our exposure is authentic so that uh, those costumes were actually worn by our ancestors. Uh, they are restored and uh, put on <clears throat> mannequins, uh, which are we are pretty proud as well because uh, I guess uh, and also the visitors uh, like them. So uh, the picture of uh, the Hana. Uh, I hope you like it as well. Uh, and yeah, we do have uh, also exposures of uh, golden head covers. Uh, it's uh, one of the largest collection, uh, maybe the largest collection of golden head covers, uh, mm -hmm. which is presented publicly. Um, and they are really, really nice. Uh, and also embroidery slices and so on. Um, and uh, we, in our museum, you can find not only the fall costumes, but also the exposure of process of uh, raw materials processing. And uh, this beautiful loom, uh, which is the oldest uh, piece we do have from in uh, our exposure, it's from 1790. Mm. Um, so it's amazing, we, we got lucky that we we were able to uh, to have it in in uh, our museum. It's pretty nice. So uh, as promised, uh, stories. Uh, I love stories, and I guess uh, uh, you love stories as well. Uh, so I will tell you three uh, three stories of uh, of the yeah, collection pieces we do have. Uh, and the first, and uh, for me, the most Im impressive and in interesting story is a story of one pair of shoes. Uh, because, uh, as I've said, we, our museum is uh, yeah, made of many, many collections, but three large collections. And one of the first large collections that came in our museum uh, came with one left shoe. It was not a pair, but just left shoe. Uh, and for four years, uh, we do have just this left shoe. I will show you this is, that's the, that's the left one, uh, which was here for four years. And uh, it looked like this, it's pretty sad, don't you think? Uh, <laughs> so uh, we opened the museum and we did not, have the right one. Uh, but after a few months, the museum was opened. Uh, some nice people gave us some fall costumes, I guess, to, to Kroyev or something like this. Uh, and box of uh, single pieces, single fall costume pieces. Uh, and then this box was the right one. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, we did not expect it at all. And the mother of uh, the lady who, who sold us uh, the, the, the large collection uh, on the beginning of the building the museum uh, as the wow. ancestor uh, to repair because uh, the ancestor of the people who gave us uh, in, in December the fall costume pieces, uh, the ancestor, I guess, uh, the grand-granddad of 
for I guess grand granddad uh, was a shoemaker and uh, those two people uh, 100 years ago have those the right one and the lady <laughs> died uh, so so it was forgotten and uh, that's the second wow. one <laughs> that it's amazing uh, so so that we have both uh for one year but yeah uh, those two shoes uh were lost or the second one was lost so uh, we are pretty glad that we we found it here uh so the second story is a story of Buddhists. uh it is that one from Chotsko, Chotsko region uh it is pretty old but uh, was in bad con in bad condition so we gave it to professional uh, repairer uh, and uh, the lady cut this bottom part and when she cut it to repair it uh, she found the newspaper which served as padding uh, for for this yeah it was a padding uh, and uh, it's a newspaper and the strange thing is and that's why it is so so interesting uh, because there was a date in the newspaper so we we know when this this body was produced so it's uh, amazing information for us because uh, it's not common or it's pretty rare that we know the exact date uh, when it was produced so that's incredible was that 1874 is that what that said yeah, 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 you have good wow. eyes. Uh, yeah. 1874, yeah. Mm -hmm. The 2nd August of 2018. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so, so that, that's, the, that's the second story. And the third story is, a, yeah, uh, it's a bit tricky to, to uh, translate it. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it's, uh, it's correctly, but I, I guess, yeah uh introductory the upper uh it's the this one this one uh that's this piece uh is uh, typical for for brides uh because they were introduced to marriage with it uh no one else uh than brides were allowed to wear it um uh, and uh, it came with uh, this woman all his life, all her her, her life, uh, and she um, carried her baby to the church for for baptistic uh, hmm. for baptism, um, and also, and it's why it is so rare. Uh, and we are pretty glad that we have here this this piece uh, in our exposure, uh, because when the woman died. Uh, she was buried with this piece, with this uh, diaper. Uh, so uh, most of them are gone. Most of them are underground. So. Uh, Takže diaper znamená plinka, jako plenky, uh, pl jako pro plena, děti. Pl jo? Plena, pl plena, yeah, it is, uh, uh, úvodnice is... Uh, a, a na co to se to používá? Uh, jako šálu? Is it like a scar? No, 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 no. It's just for, for brides. It's just for brides. Uh, it's a, let's say uh, to to show that it's that it is bright. Uh, the interesting thing is the embroidery. Uh, it is a pretty pretty uh, expensive expensive mm -hmm. uh, to 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 produce it. Uh, mm -hmm. So that it's uh, just a piece of uh, of the fall costume typical for bright. Uh, and uh yeah beautiful so 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 not many left because uh, as i said uh, the ladies or the women were buried with it mm -hmm. so uh that was the end of uh, the first part uh that's that's the end of let's say uh, museum presentation uh, so if you have any questions uh, to the first part, you want to know something I don't know about chat, is there? All right. If you want to just stop sharing your screen, we can bring everyone back up again. Uh, and yeah, yeah. And, I will and, pull up the and, questions. Yeah. 
uh, 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 uh. yeah we do have yeah thank you so much for that lecture that was um incredible the museum has so many just beautifully displayed uh, pieces i couldn't believe um for such a small town that they would have something so amazing um, it's definitely worth going to visit i have to say that one of the reasons that i wanted to go visit was that i had seen uh, anashidivi thompson who uh, is part of the pageant as she had gone to uh, with her family to go see the museum and in, um, in january and uh, just a few months after they opened and uh, she had posted a picture that you have a hand-drawn book from 1810. Yeah, incredible. It's fine. Uh, um, so do you... Yeah, I see, I see some questions. I, I mm -hmm. guess, um, yeah. Uh, uh, and Kramer asked, where was the loom found? Mm -hmm. Where was it from house or business? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah uh the loom we we bought we bought it uh some people uh wanted to sell it uh it was in a really bad condition um and it's from from uh adler gebirge or uh, yeah uh, it's in german i'm sorry uh Krkonosche, uh Krkonosche region uh and uh it is uh it is yeah it it served for for German for German uh, producer of of the of the uh, material of, of the sorry uh, the fabric the fabric of course yeah mm -hmm. so the fabric producer from Germany originally so I uh, see Andrea has a question about the. Uh, the embroidery on the book is that from the the bridal plena uh, yeah 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 it is it is we use it correct that's 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 it that's the that's the the embroidery from from plena uh is the museum open all year and in certain hours i will plan a trip uh well yeah uh elaine benda thanks for mm -hmm. for the question uh, we actually um we are open uh, from let's say end of the march uh, till the end of october uh almost every day uh except for monday but uh, check our websites you will you will find it here uh and during the winter uh just uh, if you Will be in the Czech Republic uh, in the winter. Uh, just call us, and we will we will open open for you, gladly. Uh, but uh, thank you. Uh, um, Barb asks: Is the bridal plena like a shawl, and does the bride do the embroidery on it herself, or does she buy it that way? Uh, well, yeah. Uh, no, it was a gift. Uh, it was a gift for for the bride. Mm. Uh, she did not. She, she it's it's not it's not uh, her her job because uh, if you see the embroidery, uh, it's so complicated that mm -hmm. a young woman uh, cannot be able to do it as in in such quality. Uh, mm -hmm. So it was a gift, and it was pretty expensive piece. And then you said that she was she would then be buried in it when she passed yes, away. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah, that's yeah. why a lot of them didn't exist. I don't know and, that, did. and that's yeah. why, yeah, and that's why it's so, so rare. Um, I remember translating some letters uh, where um, during, I believe it was World War II, that a family had kept all of the clothing from the mother that had passed away and they buried her in a uh, paper wearing a paper dress because they couldn't they things were so scarce that that's mm. all they had left for her and the the other family members said what a shame i can't believe we made the decision to do that that's it's terrible but you know it's just the conditions yeah. right now are so terrible that yeah yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah i've heard about uh, many many such stories uh because mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. so valuable for for them mm -hmm. uh, 
that that uh, and many the wonderful families, many families decided to to do it so mm -hmm. um, helene yeah. uh, she asked what is the oldest croy and what and uh which is mo the most valuable uh well yeah uh it's tricky to estimate uh, the exact date when the croy was uh, produced uh but yeah uh we do have uh, let's say four four or five croy cro from uh, visochina region um i don't know in the yeah next to the central bohemia uh, and they are uh, from the first from the first uh, half of uh, 19th century so 18 20 40 yeah when you calculate the value of a croy what are some of the things that you have to factor in so the the maybe how old it is the the embroidery the quality of the embroidery or yeah. the region it's from um, i suppose yeah um, yeah, the, the price the price of each croy uh, depends on what price is the potential buyer uh, able to to pay for it. So mm -hmm. so it's tricky. It's tricky. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, so I, I've um, uh, I had to I had to um, find uh, yeah some some way how to how to make an approximate value. Uh, because it's not it's not possible to to set up the, the correct price because you cannot uh, yeah you cannot count priceless uh, so, just priceless so, for all yeah, of them. yeah 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 mm -hmm. but we can we can we can uh, we have an estimate the uh, average value uh, of the cry of in our our exhibition or our exposure uh, so it's about twenty to forty thousand crowns i remember it's, it's go ahead Sorry. just estimate just estimate. Mm. i remember doing some research um about uh the first time that croy ever appeared in prague castle do you remember what year that was maybe i don't know if it was 1491 uh, i don't know why that year is standing out to me but they've been around for for centuries for sure yeah uh well <laughs> depends on what you what you uh to, let's say what is croy it is it is uh, also the tricky tricky question what the croy is mm. uh, how you how you, what what do you call croy um uh, mm -hmm. but yeah in first first the uh, croy appeared uh, in 17th century uh but uh folk folk dress is much older that's that's true uh yeah so uh yeah there's Anne Marie Vosler Bauer uh, mm -hmm. most people get to know Croya through checkers black and made dolls in the places where we can see collection of dolls yeah of course in our museum <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do have we do have plenty of of them uh more than 40 more than 40 dolls uh but uh yeah we do have a few few museums which uh are just aiming at uh, the just dolls so you can uh all right wonderful if are there any other questions that that no one uh put into the chat log that you would like us to address uh, again, I just want to thank uh, Deputy Director Josef Watzek for making the time to do this for us um, at no cost. I really, truly am very grateful um, that that uh, we can collaborate on all of this. And um, I just really thank you again for, for doing that. Uh, okay, uh, so can we move on to the second part mm -hmm. of... Uh... Uh, so, um, yeah, so I will share the screen again, mm -hmm. if it is, yeah, cool. okay. okay, okay, 
So uh, we will move on to, to the second part. Uh, so um, we will define or try to define what is CROI in uh, the way how we look at it uh, here in, uh, in museum uh, and what most uh, professionals look at CROI. Uh, and uh, the timeline of wh when do we speak about CROI in the term uh, as, as, as it states historically, uh, and basic consequences of uh, how, how the Croya topic, uh, let's say, started, uh, and how, how did they develop, and uh, how did they beginning to demise, um, and how the Croya topic uh, stands now. So you can see uh, just a little old photo of uh, Pilsner Croy. Uh, half of uh, 19th century. Um, the Croy is uh, in, in the way because uh, uh, many people look at Croy differently, different way how to how to uh, uh, how to name how to name it. Uh, so we look at Croy as everything what the villagers of the village people had in their wardrobes. Uh, so um, it's not just the festive clothing, but everyday clothing, uh, just everything what they have in their wardrobes. Mm. Uh, and that's that's the way how do we look at the term Croy and uh, how the most uh, ethnographers, ethnologists do it as well. Um, so it is just the clothing all around the yeah, and when uh, the first Croya appeared, uh, it is, as I said, it's hard to determine. You said uh, date 1491. It looks uh, like I might have been very off. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, can can be can be because uh, someone can look at uh, it that Croya appeared much earlier than than uh, the most uh, mm -hmm. most ethnographers uh, agreed to so mm. uh, it's not it's not bad uh, but uh, uh, the yeah mo most most uh, most professionals agreed that uh, Croy in Czech lands appeared after or uh, in the second half of 17th century and uh, mostly disappeared, most of the Croy disappeared, uh, or the last of them uh, in the second second half of uh, 20th century. Uh, and the way why is that uh, it is not, not easy to find a proof of, uh, of uh, villagers clothing uh, before the 17th century. Uh, and uh, the end of Croya, as we look at them uh, in 1950s, uh, it's not valid for all regions, uh, especially in Central Bohemia, the Croya, as we define them, uh, disappeared much earlier. Uh, yeah, but, but those 300 years, we can, we can tell that uh, the traditional historical clothing of uh, villagers uh, appeared in the second half of 17th century and disappeared in the 1950s. Uh, yeah, and uh, how and when uh, and why uh, the Croya uh, appeared. Um, the 30 year war, uh, I uh, guess you, most of you are aware of uh, what the 30 year war. Uh, it was a complete disaster, complete disaster, uh, especially in the Central Europe. Uh, in the Czech lands, the estimations uh, tell us that 30 to 40 population die, of population died, uh, not only because war itself, but uh, also, also due to uh, such diseases, hunger, uh, because uh, medical treatment was pretty bad at that age. So uh, it was a complete disaster for Europe and for Czech lands as well. Um, and the, the titan of serfdom, so that uh, mm, the people, especially in countryside and villages, uh, 
uh, were not able to uh, were not able to move uh, from the village to village or village to the city uh, because they were tightened with the fields uh, and with the masters who they work for. Uh, so uh, they cannot move. Uh, it is a drawing uh, from one of the most famous battles uh, or battle on Bila Hora, maybe on um, any or uh, mm -hmm. you are aware the of Battle that. of White Mountain in English. Yes, yeah. White Mountain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so uh, the regional isolation um, appeared mostly. So, can uh, the, the villagers uh, lived in one place, died in that place, and so that the villagers or the villages uh, had to be self-sufficient. Uh, they had to produce food for themselves and also uh, the materials uh, or the, the resources for, for the clothing, uh, such as linen or, or wool. Uh, so uh, it was pretty hard uh, for them to, to, to clothe themselves and feed themselves. Uh, but uh, the situation was not the same across all uh, the Czech lands. Uh, the villages uh, near rivers uh, were better uh, than the villagers uh, in mountains, for example. Uh, but uh, when the situation got better, uh, so the people wanted to produce uh, nice things, not just force them to make them survive, but also uh, they appeared nice. Uh, so they are started to produce uh, so nicer, nice things uh, for themselves. Uh, and uh, the village at uh, that time uh, was pretty rigid. Uh, the cities were better. Uh, but uh, according uh, to resources, uh, the development of villages were much, much slower uh, than the cities. Uh, so they have just few uh, occasions uh, to, to meet with uh, more than their neighbors. And it was uh, the occasion of mass uh in churches because it was the place where they can meet and exchange let's say breaking news uh but the yeah the great development came with the markets when the uh, comedians and uh some storytellers sometimes at the army uh brought some some new uh, intention for them um so they they can buy uh, some new glass uh, things and uh, new new embroideries, uh, especially when we speak about uh, Croya and uh, its development or improvement, uh, we can face the women or connect women with it. Uh, so so the Croya became in eighteenth century. Uh, and especially uh, in the second half of 18th century, it started to become more colorful. Uh, and uh, yeah, just the improvement uh, is connected with the 19th century. Uh, well, uh, if we if we speak about if we speak about uh, the yeah, the bright times for Croya. Uh, it is uh, definitely 19th century and its second half uh, in most most uh, most regions uh, because uh, it's connected with uh, industry and technical improvements uh, because uh, uh, materials were cheaper and uh, new materials came to the Czech lands. Uh, Especially cotton and some artificial uh, artificial uh, accessories, um, some glass uh, pieces. So uh, uh, the people, the villagers uh, in markets, were able uh, to buy such things uh, so that they use it and also uh, improve the, their uh, career uh, as well. And especially women love it. And uh, 
wanted uh, their uh, their men, their husbands to buy them such things. Um, and uh, in the second half of, of uh, 19th century, uh, the richest villagers or uh, the people who had just the uh, most money bought, bought Croya uh, to show off how the how they rich how are uh, how rich they are uh, on public because uh, these times it was yeah, not not many ways how to how to show off how how rich you are uh, so the Croya was uh, was one one way how to show it uh, and when the markets uh, were full of uh, those new materials colorful uh, laces uh, embroideries glass and such things uh, uh, that was from the cities uh, so so the fish city fashion invaded the village uh, so it improved Croya a lot but also uh put uh, the local traditional production uh off because uh, they were not competitive at all mm. uh so that uh, they stopped this production uh and if the village was close to the city so they it was better for them to to start working in some manufacture uh so so but it's what it was uh, connected with higher income uh so uh, it is an ambivalent uh, ambivalent situation uh for them uh on one side uh, the croya uh, started to get colorful and rich uh but on the other side uh, uh in villages next to the cities uh the Croya started to to demise to disappear. Uh, in the term we 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 know it, so it uh, it started to to uh, yeah to demise just uh, because uh, the villagers uh, don't want it to to compare with uh, rich uh, uh, city men or and. Uh, it was it was it was uh, difficult for them to uh, to maintain uh, their uh, their clothing, uh, and uh, we do have here a map where uh, the process of uh, of the mis of the croya uh, is shown graphically. Um, it, you can you can see the map of the Czech Republic and uh, some color um, marks where uh, the red color uh, represents uh, the places where uh, villagers wore Croya uh, as, as their traditional clothing for uh, till the half of, uh, of the 20th century and the white and uh, yellow uh, yellow colors are the regions where uh, the Croya were put aside uh, in the first half of 19th century. And you can see that the process uh, of the of the Mies, uh, is connected with uh, the industrial cities and uh, the regions where agriculture is not present uh, in in a uh, way where, for example, the Southern Moravia. Um, I can, uh, yeah, and it's also, uh, it's important to, to say that um, uh, we can see plenty strange situations, uh, for example, Southern Moravia and Slovatsko region, uh, where Croya are present uh, up today, uh, and nearby Znojmo, uh, it's a city where Croya were put aside in yeah, 18, 1870, 
uh, so 100 uh, years uh, before uh, Slovatsko, and it's because the railway from Vienna, uh, where the railway from Vienna, uh, where is yeah, was built uh, to Znojmo. So those those people uh, faced the rich via yeah, Vienna city men or city women, uh, and uh, could not compare with them, and they did not want to look like fools uh, compared to those rich uh, rich people from cities so that they put those uh, full costumes aside uh, much, much, much earlier than uh, the people in agricultural lands uh, in Slovatsko because uh, it is not uh, any large city uh which uh, which uh, was important for for industry so they had no intention to move somewhere else uh so that they they stayed in their villages and uh, uh lived their life uh, with the folk costumes much longer than uh the cities or the regions where uh the industry was present uh was present earlier uh, so, so that uh, you can find this map also in Atlas of all costumes to book. Uh, Anna showed you uh, a few minutes uh, ago. Uh, yeah, that's that's the that's that's the book. So, if you buy this book, you can find this map inside uh, and study it uh, by yourself. Uh, so. Uh, today, uh, there are some regions uh, where, where Croya are still alive, Southern Moravia uh, or Slovatsko especially, or uh, Western Bohemia, Chodsko, uh, the second region uh, where Croya are still present, but not in terms uh, we spoke about a few minutes ago as a way of common clothing of the villagers. Uh, folk dress or folk costume are worn for, for occasions, for special occasions, uh, not as a, a way of clothing. Uh, it's pretty good that uh, in these regions uh, the tradition are still held, uh, but uh, we don't look at the uh, the phenomenon of uh, Croya uh, in the same way as before, as the as the common common clothing of villagers. Uh, so so uh, it is it is uh, the different situation. Uh, it serves as a traditional traditional uh, way how to present their culture. Uh, but not uh, as way of living. So, so uh, it's the picture of uh, today's uh, feast, today's march or parade of uh, uh, newly made uh, folk costumes in a traditional way, uh, but not a uh, way how their ancestors uh, look to, to Croya topic. So uh, that's it for from me today. Uh, I hope I was not long. That was um, beautiful. Thank you for sharing. I love this picture of the children. Yeah. I've never seen the pleated co the pleated uh, stockings before. That's that's new for me. The pleated brown stockings. Yeah. I yeah, yeah. I, I guess uh, it's autumn, so that uh, yeah. it was cold. Yeah. So. Well, thank you again very much. This was very informative. Um, I just want to say I really appreciate what you're doing there at the museum, and um, I think 
you know, uh, we've here in, you know, our Czech American communities, I know a lot of people here collect their, have their own collections that they have gathered for over the years. And I think this is one thing that we've all wanted to see is a museum like this in the Czech Republic that is so exhaustive. And this is just truly um, wonderful to see what you're doing. So thank you again. Uh, well, uh, we are doing our best. Uh, I hope. I hope that uh, yeah, it's a it's a bit tricky situation because uh, we are in central Bohemia, where uh, topic or where Croya uh, disappeared uh, two hundred years ago. Uh, not many people lived live Croya uh, as in southern. Uh, Southern Moravia. Uh, so, uh, yeah, they are a bit jealous, I guess, uh, because uh, we've made something, uh, something such uh, complex. Um, mm -hmm. It was, it was, uh, yeah. It's absolutely fabulous. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm very glad I can, I can uh, participate in this project uh and yeah thank you uh anna and uh, also uh andrea from uh, from national chicken slovak uh, museum and library mm -hmm. i hope that uh, this presentation helped to uh present uh, our our work in uh, across across the atlantic and i hope uh, some of you uh, will will visit our museum uh, because it's it's worth it. Mm -hmm. I, I yes, I think it. I think everyone knows now that that uh, they they want to plan a trip. Um, maybe maybe even just specifically as we saw earlier, uh, Elaine Benda says she's going to plan a trip just to come see you. So <laughs> so yes, definitely. Thank you so much, uh, Don. If you don't mind, we'll go ahead and stop sharing live to Facebook as we uh, start to say our goodbyes to everyone. So um, I guess are there any last last questions for our speaker? All right, well, thank you so much for coming. And um, please again, visit the museum. I will share the website on uh, the Facebook Live post and you can share it to all of your family um, from there. So um, again, we did have some issues with sharing to American Sokol page. So it is on my private Facebook page, Anna Kukova, but we'll share it from there. And I'm sure uh, this, this uh, lecture will be something we'll be watching for a long time. So thank you so much. Okay. Thank Nasla you. Dano. Hi. Have a nice Sunday. Nasla uh, Dano. Nasla Dano. What's the Kui? Nasla Dano. What's the Kui? Bye bye. 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 Bye.